start recording. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate the physical assessment at the RN level. So I'm going to go ahead and have my reader start. As she goes through, I'm going to demonstrate each skill. Gather and prepare the necessary equipment. So you're going to need a double stethoscope, which we will provide. We have gloves, we have a tongue depressor, and you're going to need a pen light and some alcohol swabs. Perform hand hygiene. You always wash your hands when you go in the room. Introduce yourself to the patient and family if present. Hi, my name is Liz. I'm going to be your nurse today. With that comes checking the patient's name and date of birth or two identifiers. Can I have your name and date of birth? And you verify it with the wristband. Explain the procedure to the patient and family if present. Today I'm going to do a head to toe assessment on you. It's going to involve me looking at your skin, asking you to perform some movements, listening to your lungs and your heart and your abdomen. Do you have any questions? No. Family does not have any questions either. Provide privacy. We're going to pretend I have a curtain. We're going to provide the privacy. Raise the patient's bed to waist level when providing care. I'm short, so it doesn't have to go up very high. But we're going to raise the bed up. Perform hand hygiene. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands again before I get ready to touch the patient. Assess level of conscious, alert, lethargic, drowsy, or comatose. So I'm going to ask my patient a series of questions to assess their level of consciousness. Do you know who you are? Do you know the date today? Do you know what month it is? Do you know who the president is? Do you know where you're at? And you as the patient are going to answer appropriately. Okay, we are all going to be alert and oriented for our nurses. <laughs> Observe okay. speech, clarity, and appropriateness. So as they answer me, I'm saying the patient is alert, they're oriented times four, their speech is clear, and they have appropriate behavior and affect. Okay. Inspect hair distribution, thinning, alopecia, use of wigs. Lost my gloves. So, it does not say in there, but every time I touch a person, I like to have gloves on. Mm -hmm. It is not required. I still put gloves on. You need gloves to do the oral assessment. Okay, I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm going to go ahead and check your hair. I'm looking for hair distribution, any hair loss, and how everything looks. I'm also doing a skin assessment. Okay, so you're just going to take a look, checking for wigs, checking for the hair distribution, any alopecia. There's no breakdown or anything. Inspect back of hair for any skin breakdown. So I kind of went through that at once. Assess visual acuity with a Snelling chart. Have patients stand 20 feet from the chart and ask patients to read the smallest line of letters possible. First with both eyes and then with one eye at a time okay. with the opposite eye covered. Note whether patient's vision is being tested with without corrective lenses. Cranial nerve two optic. So you actually get the patient, get out of bed, and you're actually going to perform the movements as you instruct them to as a nurse. Okay, and then you're going to tell them to test your cranial nerve number two, the optic nerve. Then they can get back in bed. Remove glasses if wearing, assess perilla, verbalize pupils equal round reactive to light at blank millimeters accommodation. I recommend checking the pupil gauge first because once you shine a light in it, you dilate the eye. Okay, so I'm going to say you're at about... Oh, three milliliters. And would you go ahead and look straight ahead? I am assessing for perla. Make sure the pupils are equal, round, reactive to light and accommodation. Accommodation, you should be able to see the pupils dilate and constrict. Ask patients to hold head still and follow your finger with their eyes moving slowly up, down, right, left, diagonally up and down to the left, diagonally up and down to the right. Extracular movements, cranial nerve three four and five. So cranial and nerve six. Yes. The five shouldn't be I mean four I'm sorry, three, four and six. Three, four and six. So you should be testing the ocular motor, right? Mm-hmm. The the um trochlear trochlear and the and Okay. Go in each direction because you're testing all the muscles around the eye, which is all the different nerves. Okay, so you have to and please don't go fast, you'll make them dizzy. Hold your finger about six to eight inches from bridge of the patient's nose. Move your finger towards the patient's nose. The eyes should converge. Assume cross-eyed appearance, cranial nerve three, ocular motor, cranial nerve four, trochlear, and six, abducens. So you can do that all in one. I'm checking cranial nerve three, ocular motor, four, trochlear, and six, um, abducens. Okay, I'm gonna have you hold your head still. Follow the pen light and come in. Use your finger or the light, doesn't matter. Assess square color. 
So you're looking at the square. I'm going to look. I'm looking for any redness, any yellowness. And I'm also going to check. Assess conjunctive color presence of drainage. No drainage noted. The eyes look here good. Assess for presence of hearing aids. If present, state would remove for assessment. Okay, do you have any hearing aids in that I can't see? Nope. Okay, they have no hearing aids. Assess for presence of ear drainage and color of drainage. There is no drainage noted on either ear. Assess for nasal flaring. Okay, now here's my disclaimer. We're in a pandemic, the masks have to stay on. So the nasal and the oral assessments have to be verbalized. So I'm going to assess the nasal for flaring, any drainage, any of that stuff, but the masks stay on the patient and the nurse. Okay, assess for presence of nasal drainage, color of drainage. Okay, they take they have no drainage, there is no nasal flare. Ask patients to close eyes, occlude one nostril, and identify the smell of different substances such as alcohol. Repeat with the other nostril, cranial nerve one olfactory. So I'm gonna go ahead and close your eyes and go ahead and close one nostril. Can you identify the smell? Oh, it's alcohol, okay. Swiss nostril, smell this. I could have alcohol, I could have something with coffee on it. It's gonna be a strong sense of smell. Okay, and I'm testing cranial nerve number one, olfactory. Stand one to two feet away from patient, out of the patient's line of vision. Ask the patient to co oh, cover the ear not being mm -hmm. tested. Determine whether the patient can hear a whispered sentence or group of numbers. Perform tests on the other ear. Then you go around to the other side. Cranial nerve eight, vestibular. Is that saying it right? <laughs> vestibular cochlear nerve. Yes. Cranial nerve, nerve number eight. So you're gonna stand back and just whisper like, "Can you hear me?" Or one, two, three. And then they're gonna cover the other ear, and you're gonna go to the other side. This is testing cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular cochlear nerve. Assess assess color and moisture of mouth, lips, tongue, and mucous membranes. This is something you're gonna tell me. I would assess their oral. Cavity. I'm looking at their lips, their tongues, their mucous membranes. I'm checking whether they have dentures, the teeth quality, if there's any sores or lesions in their mouth. Assess for oral lesions or sores. Assess condition of teeth and gums. If dentures present, remove and assess gums. Okay. But again, masks stay on, so we're going to verbalize this one. Put on gloves. Ask patient to open mouth and say, I ah. observe upward movement of the soft palate. Test gag reflex by touching the posterior pharynx with a tongue depressor. Ask patient to swallow cranial nerve nine, glossopharyngeal, mm -hmm. and ten vagus. 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 So this is a prompt. Okay, I have this here to remind you to test nine hypo or glossopharyngeal and ten the vagus. So you're gonna tell me that whole box. Okay, I would have them open their mouth, say ah. I'm gonna check their gag reflex. I'm going to watch the soft palate move, and I'm checking to make sure they can swallow. This is just a tool to remind you. Assess for facial symmetry. Have the patient smile, frown, wrinkle forehead, puff out cheeks. Cranial nerve 7, facial. Okay, and you're looking for symmetry. So, okay, I'm going to have you smile, frown, puff out your cheeks. I'm testing cranial nerve number 7, which is the facial nerve. Ask patient to stick out tongue and push against the cheek with the tongue. Cranial nerve seven, hypoglossal. Shouldn't be seven. Ask patient to open and clench jaws. Hypoglossal should be 12. Oh, is that 12? It is. Yeah. It's a, yeah. I'm sorry, it's That's 12. Okay. So when they stick out their tongue and push against their cheek, we're testing the hypoglossal, which is cranial nerve number 12. Then you should have them, go ahead. Ask the patient to open and clench jaws. Cranial nerve five, hygienomal. Okay, so open and clench your jaws, a chest and cranial nerve number five of the trigeminal. Assess trachea, midline deviated. Okay, so I'm going to have them go ahead and look up. I'm looking at the trachea. Please don't squeeze the trachea. This is the trachea right here. You want to make sure it's not deviated. If it's deviated, it lets us know that they're having a breathing issue. Maybe one of the lungs has collapsed, okay? Assess neck, range of motion. Have patient touch chin to each shoulder. Have them do this. Each ear to the corresponding shoulder. Move like this. The chin to the chest and tip the head back as far as possible. Okay, so as the nurse, you're going to give them direction. I'm checking your range of motion. Do this, 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 this. 
Place your hands on the patient's shoulder while he, she shrugs against resistance. And this is checking cranial nerve number. Place your hand on patient's left cheek, on the left cheek, then the right cheek, and have the patient push, push against it. Cranial nerve 11, accessory. Okay. Those are your cranial nerves right there, and that's a lot. I get that. The more you go through it, you put actions to names and numbers, the smoother it's going to go. Okay, that's the hard part of it. Now we're going to go into the rest of our physical assessment. Palpate the left and then the right carotid, carotid arteries and grade the strength. Please do not compress both at the same time. That is a chokehold. Okay, they will pass out. So you feel, you're looking for the strength, and make is regular. Okay? Inspect shoulders for any skin breakdown. Okay, I don't see any skin breakdown on the shoulders. Assess, the vis assess for visible protrusion of the jugular veins while patient sitting in bed at 15 to 30 degree angle. Okay. So you're going to have them turn their head away. We're checking their jugular vein. Okay, it's the vein that kind of runs right here. If it's looking like a garden hose and bounding, that lets us know about the fluid status of our patient. And we're going to check the other side too. When we check the carotid, we should also listen to them. Okay? That should be on your checkoff sheet too. Us also take the car carotid for vascular sounds by placing a stethoscope over the carotid artery and listen with the diaphragm and then the bell. You have to listen with both sides because they're going to pick up on different pitches. You can hear something maybe higher pitched or lower pitched. So you have to do both sides of your stethoscope. On both sides of your head. On both sides, yep. We're listening on how the blood's flowing from the body to the head. So if there's any obstructions, any narrowing, you will be able to hear it. Chest, cardiac, respiratory. Okay, so now we're moving down to the chest. Right, go ahead. Assess color, temperature, and moisture of skin. Chest looks good. Now you may stay dressed as the patient, okay? So I'm gonna visibly assess the chest, I'm looking for color, skin color, no wounds, skin is dry and intact. Okay, <coughs> verbalized respiratory pattern, regular, non-labored. They are breathing regular, not labored. Assess thorac thoracic um, expansion by standing behind mm -hmm. the patient and placing both thumbs on either side of the patient's spine at the level of T9 or T10. Ask the patient to take a deep breath and note movement of your hands. So you're gonna put your hands at T9 and T10, on the patient's back. When they take a deep breath, your hands are gonna move up and out symmetrically, okay? This lets us know how well their chest muscles and their rib cage is working, okay? okay? Also take anterior lung sounds, 10 sites. Okay. And I gave you a diagram to show you the 10 sites of your lung sounds. Make sure your first two are above the clavicle, okay? This is your clavicle right here. Your lung goes all the way up here. So deep breath, deep breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're taking a deep breath every time you put your stethoscope down. You gotta hit all ten points. Yes, you gotta Ident all ten. Identify the ana anatomical location and name of the aortic Harmonic triscupid, triscupid, and mitral heart valve sounds and acetate. Okay, so I gave you a diagram of this. On the right sternal border, second intercostal space, so two ribs down, okay, is going to be your aortic. You go right across the sternum to your pulmonic, down to the fifth space for your tricuspid, and then over to this midclavicular line, middle of this breast. Okay, and that's your mitral. Ape to man. Aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, mitral. And then this is where we're going to listen to that apical pulse for a minute with your instructor. Locate and name landmarks for finding the apical pulse. Fifth intercostal space, left mid clavicular line. Clavicular line. Yep. And this <laughs> is where I'm going to have a timer out and we're going to listen to that apical pulse for a minute. For one minute. Full minute, yep. I was going to say apical um, rate for one minute. Measure and document the rate and rhythm. Must be within four beats. Yep. Now let's say you get to 45 seconds and you lose it. They hiccup, they sneeze, something. Say, okay, I want to start over again. We can start over again. Till you tell me the rate you get, 
You can take as many times as you want, but that does eat up some of your time. Okay? Also take four lateral long sounds on each side. Okay. So the lateral sounds, trying to make sure the camera can see the patient, is one, two, then you zig forward and zag backwards. Okay? So on a person, it's gonna be here, 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 here. Okay? And you have to do it on both sides because they got two sides of their chest, right? Okay, take a deep breath. Try not to strip your neck in here. One, two, three, four. And then also take 10 sites posterior long sounds. Okay, so you go to their back again. And you're gonna listen to the 10 sounds. Make sure you're not listening over their scapulas. Okay, you're not gonna hear anything over those bones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you kind of make a little pattern coming down and out. Down and out. Okay? And verbalized breath sounds heard. All breath sounds were clear. There was no signs of distress. They were non-labored. He was not using any accessory muscles, and he was not using oxygen. Okay. Have patient roll to one side to assess skin of lower back and buttocks. Okay. So, again, you can stay covered as the patient. You would have them roll over, and you're doing that skin assessment on the back. You may also do that while they're sitting up when you're listening to their back. Assess for scars, tattoos, piercings, and incisions, and describe. Okay. Good. Um, gastrointestinal. So now we're coming down to our abdominal assessment. Assess skin, color, and moisture. I'm just sitting up a little bit. Okay. So this is where you look. I'm assessing skin color, not diaphoretic, intact. Yep, assess bowel patterns, how often. You have regular bowel movements. As patient, when was last BM, date, and describe. When was your last bowel movement? Can you describe it? Was it loose? Was it hard? Was uh, it normal? Assess for flatus. Are you passing gas? Escalate all four quadrants. This is where you're going to listen to all four quadrants for bowel sounds. Bowel sounds are active in all four quadrants. Describe the bowel sounds heard, active, absent, hyperactive, or hypoactive times four quadrants. Palpate abdominal lightly in all four quadrants using the pads of your fingers. Soft, firm, distended. Assess for rebound tenderness by applying pressure to the abdomen and quickly removing your hands as patient if experienced pain. Okay. The reason why we're palpating is we're feeling for masses. You can actually feel you know, whether they're constipated, you can feel tumors in the abdomen, you can feel cysts, you can feel all that, okay? The rebound tenderness can let us know maybe if it's appendicitis or a pancreatitis, okay? So all of these put pieces of the puzzle together for the patient. Place your hand on the abdomen with your non-dominant hand with your index or middle finger of your dominant hand. Strike the middle finger of the hand on the abdomen. Determine if sound is tympanic or dull. Okay, this will tell us a lot about the patient too. Anybody ever see those ascites bellies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they sound really high pitched. Excess for frequency or urgency. Do you have any problems urinating? Do you urinate a lot, a little bit, any pain, any burning when you urinate, any smell, any odors? Assess for burning or pain with urination. Assess urine, color, and clarity. Assess clear? amount. You so you're testing for polyuria or oliuria where they pee up none or they pee a lot. Lay your non-dominant hand flat over the costo vertebral angle. So you put your non-dominant hand over this angle of the ribs right here. You should describe it a little bit more in there. It's over the twelfth rib. Over the twelfth rib in between the spine. Make a fist with your dominant hand and firmly thump the fist on the flat non-dominant hand. Okay. What organ am I over? Ask the patient the if they feel mm -hmm. tenderness or pain. Okay. This will let me know if the kidneys are inflamed. They will jump out of this bed if it hurts, trust me. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't have to be a hard tap. Now, while you have your patient up when you're doing the thoracic expansion, 
You can go ahead and check the kidney function. You can go ahead and do your posterior lung sounds. You can only have them set up once, that's fine. Okay? I'm just going in order of the paper. Upper extremities. Assess color, temperature, and moisture. Okay, so now I'm going to assess your upper extremities. Skin is intact, it is dry, it is warm. Inspect elbows for skin breakdown. How many extremities do you have? Four. Four. Yeah, how many upper? Two. Two. Yep, so make sure you check both sides. Assess for edema, great okay. pit and edema if present. I don't see any edema present. Assess skin turgor, tinting, or elastic. So that's when you actually pinch the skin up. Okay, if it stays tinted, that lets you know the hydration status of your patient. So Assess. do we do it at the chest or do we do it on the arm? I thought it's like the chest. The hmm. right here. For the Yeah. Turgor's on the arms. Okay. Assess color of nail beds and condition of nails. Inspect for clubbing. No clubbing noted. Assess capillary refill. I'm gonna check the capillary refill. Less than three seconds. Palpate and compare radial pulses for strength and regularity. Radial pulses are regular and equal on both sides. Assess ability to move upper extremities freely. Can you move your arms around? Any pain? Is motion? Nope. Assess bilateral arm muscle tone and strength. Place your hands on the upturned forearms while the patient pushes up against resistance. Then place your hands under the forearms while the patient pushes down verbalize strength and equality. So we're gonna have to push up at the same time and then push down. So we're gonna go push up with my hands, push down with my hands. So I can equal on both sides. Assess bilateral hand grips, verbalize strength and equality. Go ahead and squeeze my hands. Assess for numbness and tingling. Any numbness or tingling in your arms, fingers? Nope. Okay. Lower extremities. Now we're gonna go down to the lower extremities. Assess Assess skin, color, temperature, and moisture. Both legs, assessing the skin. Inspect heels for skin breakdown. And yes, you will be assessing your patient's feet. <laughs> Inspect heels for skin breakdown. Assess for edema, great pitting edema if present. No edema noted. Assess hair distribution. We're looking at the hair distribution of the legs because that's going to tell us a lot about vascular status on the patient. Okay. Assess um, for wounds or ulcerations. I see no wounds or ulceration. Hair assess, distribution is even. Assess color of nail beds. I'm gonna check your nail beds. Assess capillary refill. Capillary refill looks good. Palpate bilateral dorsalis pedis pulses. Yep. Verbalize strength and equality. Regular. Palpate bilateral posterior <laughs> tibial pulses and verbalize strength and equality. Okay, those are strong and equal. Assess ability to move legs freely. Any problems moving okay. your legs? Move your legs around, okay. Assess dorsiflexion, verbalize strength and equality. Push against my hands. Assess plantar flexion, verbalize strength and equality. Push against my hands. Assess for numbness and tingling. Any numbness or tingling in the feet, legs, toes? Nope. Post procedure. Okay. Perform so, hand hygiene, return level of bed to lowest position, make sure call out within reach, document the procedure. <sighs> so I'm going to put the bed all the way down, make sure they have their call light, take my gloves off, wash my hands. Now you do not need to physically document this, okay? We want you to verbalize that you're going to go document this. And that is the head to toe assessment.